man, that, that's the place I grew up hunting. I've always wanted to get a film hunting there with shooting mallards in the sunshine. Uh, I just think it's the prettiest place on earth to shoot a duck, and I've hunted Canada all the way to the Texas coast, and it's just it's just one of those beautiful, magical places when it's right, and it just really can't get much righter than right now. You know, a lot of people have asked me all the time, why, why do I love duck hunting more than I love the others? And for me, it's, a, it's like the dance. You're calling to try and see if they'll come dance with you. We're a bunch of determined individuals and we push for wetland conservation. It is our passion. Get them. Well done! Right. To see them cut, dip, and weave. But seeing those ducks decoy and seeing that acrobatic moves in the air is just is something you, I never get tired of. It was like the epitome of puddle of honey. To watch the birds work is the real objective of the hunt. Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems innovators in waterfowl hunting. Hello and welcome to Ducks Unlimited TV. I'm Betsy Nable. With additional consideration from our friends at Mossy Oak Brand Camo, we're pleased to bring you Kansas waterfowling exploits with an exceptional group of Georgia DU volunteers, Macy Watkins, Jeff Barnes, and Matt Dubnik. On a special note of congratulations, Matt is the first DU University chapter alumni to become a Ducks Unlimited board member. Great duck and goose hunting with a side order of Kansas ringnecks. All next on DUTV. So I'm excited. First time hunting in Kansas. First time hunting in these type of conditions. So hopefully it won't deter the birds. Ducks Unlimited University programs truly do inspire young leaders across the country to get into conservation and how to be a leader in your community, not just in the outdoor world. And the university programs really prepare young people for what's next after college. Jeff Barnes saw how the university programs were very beneficial and how they would affect the young people involved in conservation and he saw that and decided to highlight that for the state of Georgia and he recognized that and utilized those young volunteers and those young leaders. I'm excited. The drive for Georgia volunteers is we all understand that, that ducks aren't prevalent um, all throughout Georgia like they are in some other states. But as I tell a lot of people, it's like ducks don't cash checks. So, you know, we don't have the water or the food that make the ducks come to Georgia. And we all hunt all over the country. And, and that's our message is we understand that in order for us to have ducks where we do go hunt, that we've got to do our part to conserve them and keep them prevalent where we are hunting. Ducks, ducks, ducks. Macy is someone that any women in the outdoor industry can look to and say that's a true success story. She started at her university chapter in Georgia and her time and her efforts that she put into conservation and the work of DU has given her the opportunity to work in the outdoor industry as her career and that's something truly special that you get to see her success story. So I met Jeff because I was involved in the University of North Georgia Ducks Unlimited chapter as a college student. If we had an event, Jeff was there. And then after college, I graduated, took a job in the outdoor industry, and I get a, a call from Jeff saying he is going to be the new state chairman and that he needed someone 
who was internet savvy and into social that could be his publicist. So I gladly accepted right on the spot. The hunt the first afternoon was something that was happening so fast. As soon as we got set up, the birds were coming in. We would get a group. The two on the ends would run out, grab the birds, and then have to sprint back to the blind as we were reloading, trying to get ready for the next group that we could see coming in on the horizon. Ducks Unlimited Television is presented by Drake Waterfowl Systems, innovators in waterfowl hunting. Mossy Oak Shadow Grass Habitat, the official camo of Ducks Unlimited. Browning Firearms, the best there is. Native Nurseries, hand-selected, hand-grown plants for wildlife. Higdon Outdoors, quality, customer service, innovation, that's Higdon. And Ducks Unlimited's Conservation for a Continent campaign. Our wetlands, our legacy. This week we're at the fabulous Triple Creek Outfitters in Central Kansas with owner Richard and Christy and our wonderful god Cash. So, I mean, I grew up here. My dad started packing me out there in that place on his shoulders when I was four years old and uh, just kind of a neat place where you can just show back up and and hunt, you know, one of those places that we'll always have to hunt, you know, as a family. Matt was one of the first members of a university chapter that grew to be on the board of director for Ducks Unlimited. That is something special that you get to see that he started in college and it led him all the way to one of the highest positions in Ducks Unlimited. As a Ducks Unlimited volunteer for more than 20 years, it's really cool for me to see the continued uh, emphasis and, and value placed on volunteers that come through the college ranks. You know, that's where I got my start at Georgia Tech in 2001 was, was a volunteer at the collegiate level. You know, that, that's our training ground, that's our proving ground, and we take those volunteers and teach them so much, and, and, and those are folks that become volunteers for, for decades to come. One of the most essential components is the volunteers. Ducks Unlimited would not be able to function and preserve wildlife and conservation wetlands without their volunteers. So volunteers truly are one of the most important things to Ducks Unlimited. The DU University programs are, are amazing. I personally had five people on my state committee that were straight out of the, the university program because I had worked with them in their local university chapters and saw the passion that they had and realized that just because they were students and much younger than the normal local volunteer did not mean that they didn't understand how this worked and they didn't understand how to put on a banquet or how to reach out to sponsors. They know this stuff. And so that's what's great about the university program is when they come out and they've graduated, they've already put on four local events. They, they are the gold mine of a perfect volunteer walking into a local chapter because they already know the DU methods, they already know how to put on a banquet, and they're just as passionate as everyone else. I mean, it's crazy to think how far I have come because of DU. I feel like DU set the trajectory for me and my career. Um, just me as an outdoorsman. I, I don't know where I would be without DU because it brought me so many experiences, so many friendships, and um, just so much, just a wealth of knowledge that I've gotten from DU. The hunt on day two was probably more enjoyable for me just because I like the community aspect of duck hunting and we got to be in a blind together and we weren't necessarily separated by those A-frames and we could have great conversation as well as watch the birds come in and watching the sun on those green heads was something very nice to see.
DU members live in places like Stuttgart, Arkansas and Rockport, Texas, Yuba City, California and Venice, Louisiana, which are all top waterfowl hunting destinations. They also hail from places like my hometown of Bartow, Florida or Athens, Georgia, areas known more for oranges and football than ducks and geese. The message here is that you don't have to live in a place known for great waterfowl hunting or even be a waterfowl hunter to support wetlands and wildlife habitat conservation. DU members live in all 50 states and they give their time and money for wetlands habitat restoration, conservation and waterfowl research regardless if they see thousands of ducks and geese in their backyard or have to travel to see that magical migration. What Ducks Unlimited does to increase waterfowl populations helps people around North America. Wetlands aid in storm mitigation, absorbing potential floodwaters and keeping them from reaching coastal communities. Wetlands habitat have a profound ability to protect communities against the impacts of climate change by reducing flooding, protecting shorelines, re-nourishing groundwater aquifers and improving water quality. No matter where you live or what you do, wetlands conservation is good for the environment and good for people. To learn more about how you can help advance this mission, check out our website at ducks.org. DU Insights is brought to you by Mossy Oak Properties. Find your favorite place at mossyoakproperties.com. Good morning. This is day three with Triple Creek Outfitters and the Georgia Ducks Unlimited Volunteers. We had kind of a slow start this morning. Dense fog once the sun rose, starting to pick up a little bit. Macy and I have been admiring the green heads coming in. We saw a group of pintails. That's Macy's duck that she's after the heck. My favorite duck. But it's a bit colder today. I feel kind of spoiled. We have the heaters on and the blind. Triple Creek is definitely taking care of us. Yeah, I do feel spoiled, and one of the great things about duck hunting is the camaraderie, um, where you get to be with a group, and breakfast is one of my favorite things in this world, and, and we have it cooking in the blind today. So that, that is one of my favorite things about duck hunting, just the, the atmosphere that you can be in while you're doing it. It's a great day, and we're seeing a lot of green heads, and, just can't ask for much more. It's, it's already a great day all day three. I did a little breakfast. <laughs> what we got going on here? A little biscuit and the duck blind. It's the Marsh Cafe. We don't want you to waste away out here. The differences of the what we've had available to us is just awesome. Getting to hunt the dry fields the first day and then coming out to the marsh the second day. One primarily geese, the other one primarily ducks. It's crazy, it's like we're in two different places, but we're still in central Kansas. I've never seen a show like this, I've never seen it. You know, getting out to this part of the country in, in central and southeast Kansas, if you've never experienced it, this, this is the way to do it. This, this is absolutely, just unbelievable to be in the dry fields. See these ducks and these geese want to be here, want to commit right in a dry field. Then you get out in the marsh and, and they're doing it even better. It's, th this Thanks is it. Too. One thing that's very captivating about duck hunting is the use of working dogs. And Cash and his dog Sadie, She's a young dog, but she's got lots of potential. She's full of energy. She has a great duck retrieving career ahead of her. There's ducks in the morning, pheasants in the afternoon, then inside with the family watching the big screen TV in the evening is the dog of duality, the ultimate hunting companion, prepared to go anywhere. It's not a really hard process to develop your dog into a dual purpose dog. If you have a plan, we'll show you how. Our first consideration in developing a multi-purpose gun dog is to decide what will be the primary hunting expectations and what is secondary. Is duck hunting the primary goal with an occasional pheasant hunt or quail? 
then that's where we, our training emphasis will begin, waterfowl, with secondary uplift. Training should be progressive and logical for the dog. No jumping around with lessons. A great many skills will cross over between disciplines, from obedience to hand signals, introduction to gunfire to handling. With the training of a duck dog, opportunities will exist for the inclusion of upland skills, such as the walk-up, which emphasizes steadiness, marking, and game recovery. The waterfowl retriever will be expected to complete long water retrieves, sent from a blind, sometimes sitting still. The upland retriever will be working while moving, often making multiple recoveries at a shorter distance, but in very thick cover. While both skills do complement one another, don't confuse the young starter. Focus on the skills there most important to a successful first season with your dog. For the dog of duality, the social skill, that is patience, working around other dogs, place training in the home, all are equally important to field performance. If the dog is prepared to go anywhere, anytime, to any game. Duck Dog with Mike Stewart is presented by Purina Pro Plan, nutrition that performs. DUTV is powered by Browning Ammunition, the best there is. Biologic, scientifically proven wildlife products. Purina Pro Plan, nutrition that performs. Tetra Hearing, more than hearing protection, it's hearing perfection. Mossy Oak Properties, America's land specialist. Zinc Calls, a champion in every call. Closed captioning for Ducks Unlimited Television is brought to you by Mossy Oak Bottomland, the official timber pattern of Ducks Unlimited. Power Hand PH2 has been our number one selling duck call since we developed it, I would say around 2003, 2004. Uh, a great call, it's a double reed style, very easy blowing, J-frame style, so it's very easy to tune. I would say one of the easiest duck calls on the market to learn how to blow. But if you, by chance, the reeds come apart, you have to take it apart to clean it, not sound right, you can do it in the field, you can do it at home, as long as you install the reeds the same direction. There's no tuning of this call. When you receive it from Zinc Calls, it's tuned, it'll be attuned and in tune for the rest of its life. This is a medium to light uh, blowing call. Very easy to blow, uh, not real loud, but man, there's been so many people across the United States and Canada that's had great success with this duck call. <coughs> See how smooth that duck call is? PH2 by Zinc Calls. Duck Talk with Fred Zinc, powered by Zinc Calls, a champion in every call. My overall experience with Triple Creek Outfitters has been great. The volunteers that we have hunting with us has made it top notch. The locations that Richard and Cash have put us on have been wonderful and we couldn't ask for a better hunt here in Kansas. Richard and Christy and Cash and the whole team at Triple Creek Outfitters have just been amazing. They have rolled out the red carpet for us, have welcomed us with open arms like, like we're members of their own family. They know the land, they know the landscape, they know where the birds are, and, and they've made it very easy for us to move from one piece of, of property to another. But they've, they found the birds without question. They've put us on them, and, and it has turned into some very successful hunts. 
<laughs> Look at that. Look at that. This trip to Kansas has been amazing. Uh, it's been a long time in coming for, for planning and coming out of COVID and, and getting things organized and getting all the different people scheduled and the flights and everything. And it's been totally worth every bit of it. It's been a great experience coming to a different flyway. I've never hunted out here before. I'm usually in, in Arkansas or Mississippi or Kentucky or Tennessee or Georgia. And to get to come out and see a totally different type of hunting and see how people do it out here it's been so rewarding and I really hope that one day I'll be back. Honestly, one of the best hunts of my life. I've never seen the sky turn black like that and just so many groups of ducks um, get to observe that in nature. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm speechless at what I saw. The waterfowling heritage that we share with you remains unique in scope of continent scale conservation. DU Mission Success is all about people and we have the most engaged donor and volunteer system in North America. A special thanks to Mossy Oak, the official camouflages of Ducks Unlimited, and to everyone else who makes this show a reality. Thanks for watching and see you again soon on DU TV. Oh, God. Did you take your second eye? Yeah. That was not pleasant.